Tanks, ever since their creation, have been a very effective weapon of war, and have stood the test of time even in today's conflicts. And in Hell at Loose, the same applies. Tanks are a really good force multiplier for helping infantry, engaging other tanks, or clearing out fortified locations. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to play Tank Crew right. Now, in today's video, we're going to have several topics we're going to discuss today. They are the following. Your loadout, your responsibilities, different tank classes, crew management, awareness, and any little extra bits I want to throw on at the end. In regards to loadout, I'm going to talk about the tank commander and tank crewman all in one. Now, your first loadout for the tank commander is as follows. For the United States, you have the Thompson and M1911. For the Germans, you have the MP40 and Luger. And for the USSR, you have the PPSH with box mag and Nagant 1895 revolver. Now, once you level up high enough, you'll get the mechanics loadout, which are the following. For the United States, you have the M1911 and a blowtorch. And for the Germans, you'll have the P38 and the blowtorch. And for the USSR, you'll have the TT-33 and a blowtorch. Now, for your tank crewman, all you'll get as first off is your M1911 for the Americans, P-38 for the Germans, and for the USSR, you'll have the Nagant 1895 revolver. Once you get the mechanics skill, which it's advised once you get it, don't even go back to the first class, you'll have the M1911, blowtorch and smoke grenades for the US. For the Germans, you'll have the P-38, blowtorch and smoke grenades. And for the Russians, you'll have the Nagant 1895 revolver, blowtorch, and smoke grenades. Now, I want to talk about the blowtorch a little bit. For those who don't know, the blowtorch is an item, once you unlock it and equip it to your class, you can repair the tank while in the field. You don't have to go back to a repair station or wait for an engineer to potentially repair you. You can get out and repair the tank yourself. If you're a tank commander and you have two crew members who can run the blowtorch, it's more advised that you run the SMG class then if possible but if you don't have crew members who can run the blowtorch then it's your preference but it's advised at least someone to have the blowtorch and that is for you to decide and whatever your crew can field now i'm going to separate the responsibilities into two little subcategories one leading up to what a tank should do as a whole and then another subcategory of what crew member jobs are there and what's about them now, overall, as a tank, you are a force multiplier. You are a trump card. You are able to bring a lot of potential firepower forward for your allies, being able to clear out pockets of infantry, flush out people from fortifications, take out garrisons with ease, and in some cases, take out enemy tanks. All these can be done from a tank, and it's important to play your cards right, whether that means helping the infantry or flanking around to deal with enemy armor threats and getting around and forcing the enemy to deal with you taking pressure off the infantry. It just depends on what situation you find yourself in. Now in a tank, your main threats are the infantry and other, other tanks, particularly anti-tank gunners and, and, and engineers with satchels. These guys are your main threats, especially since they can hide anywhere and you might miss them, especially if you're only a two-man crew potentially, or less. These guys can latch onto your tank or wait for the perfect moment and ambush you, leading to a very little reaction time or very little way to fight back, especially if you are all alone without any infantry allies. Armor can be differing threats depending on what you're in and what the enemy brings to play. So keep that all in mind as well as a overall responsibility. Your tank is not invincible, so keep it alive at all costs, especially if you don't have the fuel to replace it. Now I'm gonna go over the different jobs and responsibilities of the other crew members. So importantly, you have three jobs, the driver, the gunner, and the spotter. Just to keep it simple. Now let's talk about the driver. A driver is a person that moves the vehicle around to get to the battlefield and takes routes to get you to the battlefield or flank around, depending on what you're doing. Now, vehicles are from World War II, so a lot of them are manuals. We will touch a little bit more on that in the class designation because there is some differences among them. So keep that in mind. But driver drives it around, and some vehicles you do have a uh, whole machine gun to assist attacks on enemy infantry but it is kind of hard to use but i wanted to at least mention it for the sake of mentioning it then you have the gunner spot which is fun but complex in its own way um, the main damage or the main damaging feature of a tank being able to deal lots of hurt to enemy infantry and tanks alike 
you have three different shell types depending on what country you're playing. Now, most countries have a armor-piercing shell, which is good for taking out any enemy tanks. And you have HE rounds, good for light armored uh, vehicles, such as armored car slash recon tanks, trucks, half-tracks, and of course, enemy infantry. And then if you're playing as the Americans for the medium and heavy 75 Sherman, you can get smoke rounds to blind the enemy or help your infantry advance using smoke. So just some things to take into account as a gunner. And as a spotter, you're the one that typically is the tank commander, at least tank commander is recommended to be up there so they can call out targets and ping targets for the rest of the team and mark areas for the team and you alike. So the spotter's position is a spotter's scope or a periscope with really good visibility that can look 360 degrees around the tank in a very quick manner to search for targets for you. And this way it helps the gunner and driver see what's ahead of them, especially if you're trying to guide them along roadways. Or for the gunner, at least getting them targets such as enemy uh, bunches of infantry or enemy tanks. Since it's kind of hard to see everything in the driver's periscope or the gunner's scope. So the spotter, you have a lot of responsibility, kind of microing the tank in a sense. That's why the tank commander should usually be at this position. Since you should be microing the tank anyway, and so you can call targets and ping them out accordingly. Now moving on to different tank classes, here is a nice diagram that I was able to find and add to it of all different tanks and their map designators. So just so I don't have the name of every single tank, here you go, pause the video, screenshot it, but we're gonna keep moving. Now I'm going to talk about the different tank classes in a, as a whole, starting with the recon tanks or armored cars. Now these are very lightly armed, lightly armored, but very fast tanks that can go around the battlefield at blazing speeds. These are very much used for ferrying recon teams into battle, doing reconnaissance work themselves, do, and doing hit and run tactics. They're not really built for front on engagements. You use these to speed around the map, taking out supply trucks, half tracks, and flanking enemy tanks and getting flank shots on them. Now this vehicle has an automatic transmission, meaning you don't have to mess with the different gears. The game will do it for you, giving it that extra speed and less microing that you have to do as a driver. But if you warned, you don't have treads, you have wheels. So it is a lot easier to get these things stuck than a regular tank that has treads. So just to sum it up, recon vehicles, lightly armed, lightly armored, but very fast and good for basically hit and runs. And that's the recon tank in a nutshell. In regards to reconnaissance, the viewport on the recon tanks are smaller, but you are able to take pictures where no, one, no other tank can. So take this into account if you wish to help the team by giving them a spotting bonus, if you can at least get the people in the photo. Moving on to light tanks, they're fairly similar to recon vehicles in terms of armor, armament, and mobility. Except in the mobility section, they have a manual transmission instead of an automatic transmission. So you do have to cycle gears when accelerating and then to reverse. So that is one least major difference in that regard. Light tanks, however, can take some punishment and bounce certain projectiles, such as rockets, if shot at the front and at an angle, and other light tank shots. Now, the light tanks are very different from each nation. The Americans arguably have the best one in the M5 Stuart having a driver uh, machine gun, where the other two countries for Germany and the Soviet Union don't. The T-70 for the Soviets does not have a driver machine gun, but it does have a main cannon, 45mm. And I bring that up because the Germans arguably have the worst light tank, the Panzer II Lux. The Lux has a 20mm auto cannon. Now, this is great for killing infantry, but it is very terrible against other tanks, and the only way you're going to kill another light tank in a Lux is if you get behind it and fire enough shots to actually kill it. Compared to the other two nations' tanks that have main cannons that can still do something against weak spots. And unfortunately, if you're, any, if you're in any of these light tanks, you're not going to stand up against anything heavier than a medium. So try to use this as well as a hit and run tank and for light infantry support. This thing is also good for hitting flanks and getting around the enemy as it is very mobile as these tanks are very mobile but other than that you play it very similarly to a recon tank just minus the recon part now medium tanks have a nice balance between armor armament and mobility and in hell loose shows up pretty well you do have a manual transmission which can make for some challenging drives but other than that 
Medium tanks are very common on the battlefield. They're very cheap at 200 fuel. That's why you'll see them around a lot, especially if the commander does not have nodes. But these tanks are still pretty effective. These are tanks that are truly frontline tanks. These can hold their own against enemy infantry attacks. They can help move the infantry up. They can deal with other tanks if needed and so on. So medium tanks are good in between, between heavy armor and light armor. And because of how cheap they are, you're gonna see these fairly common on the battlefield. So medium tanks, that's them in a nutshell. And last but not least, we have heavy tanks, which have very good armor and very good cannons, but their movement is very slow. But these tanks are basically your breakthrough tanks. They do move fast enough to keep up with the infantry and even go past them. These are the tanks you use to push front lines with as everyone fears these. And unless they have heavy tanks themselves or satchel charges and can get close, these tanks are fairly impenetrable. And they are great for breaking through enemy defenses and killing other tanks. Now, there are weak spots on, all, on these tanks, such as the cupolas, the machine gun ports, turret rings, and if you can get on the sides or back of these tanks. They're not invincible then. But besides that, heavy tanks are your push-through tanks. These are the tanks that can take a lot of punishment. They can take the most punishment. They can take at least three rockets, which are more than the other tanks in any of the categories, just for a reference. Crew management truly comes down to how you can coordinate with your squad, whether you're a tank crewman or a tank commander. In a tank crewman sense, how well you can listen to the commander's orders and understand what they are telling you. And as a tank commander, how can you get your guys to buy into your system and truly understand that you are in command if you tell them to do something that they will do it and understand what all you need to do in your specific roles between the driver, the gunner, and the commander itself. Assuming the commander is a spotter and you have two people either in either role. Where the driver needs to be listening to the commander for where to go, roadways to take, and just overall awareness. The gunner, same thing, except in the sense of awareness, they need to know where to shoot, what shell type, where you want rounds at, what whether you need to fire HE at a group of soldiers, or, oh, there's an enemy tank coming up, fire that round and quickly swap to armor piercing. Things change in a moment's notice. That's warfare in a nutshell. And the same applies to tanks. And the better your crew can coordinate, even when shit starts hitting the fan, you should be able to get things done. This also comes down to your reaction times. If you're getting hit by something, you figuring out where you're getting hit from and how to deal with it. Instead of wondering, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, should I turn? Should I go reverse? Should I? And fumbling around. That's fumbling around with the controls compared to, hey, we got hit left, angle left, driver, and they angle left. If you're able to shout those orders out as a tank commander or as a very self aware driver that just knows where to go, especially if you know where you got hit from, it helps. And this comes with building chemistry if you have some friends you like to play tank commander or tank crew with. This comes with that experience. And the more coordination you have, the more effective you're going to be as a tank crew. Kind of think of it as veteran C, almost. The more you do something, the better you're going to be at, and that's anything in general in life. Now, it's also advised to not be in one specific position, and as a tank commander, sure, you're maybe the one exception in wanting to be in the same position as a spotter's position, but it's important to have crew members that can do both, both driving and gunning. That way, everyone gets a fair shot at doing the fun gunning job, but also the important driving job. And that way, you have a crew that can do a lot. Not just one-trick ponies that, oh, I gotta be the driver all time and not gonna be fun time. It just makes for both a fun experience for everyone, and overall makes you better as a tank crewman or tank commander in general. Because then you figure out the game mechanics behind a tank. Whether it's being a better gunner or a better driver, and understanding that oh, I, we can do this, well, maybe we can fire on the move and get better at that. Again, comes with time and practice, but that's why you want to be good at everything, not just one position. Even if you want to do gunning a lot, it'd be good to be a driver here and there. It might help in the long run. With all that, that brings me to the next point real quickly, awareness. Now, this goes for all members of the tank, regardless of their positions. It's important to be weary of your position, where you're at, 
what is your angle, your direction, where the enemies are coming from, so on. And as a spotter, that is your main position. Whoever's in the spotter's position, whether you are the tank commander itself or a crew member, that's basically a de facto commander. Knowing where you're at, what the situation is around you. Do you did you just lose the point? Mean you're about to lose all your infantry support? Well, it might be good to pull back. Oh, I'm gonna charge the enemy with no infantry support while the enemy has a bunch of tr enemy troops waiting for me. Let's go charge them. No. You look at the map like you are an officer and look at the situation and where would you be best suited? Are there any enemy tanks around? Checking the map for that. Checking where the front lines are. How far can I go before I run out of infantry support or the infantry can't push up any farther until we clear the way for them? Or, and just ask yourself some of those questions. Where can you be the most effective but not get yourself in any trouble? And that varies with the tank you are in and what your role is as i've already mentioned but whether you're in a recon tank and knowing your positioning or a heavy tank with your positioning and knowing what's on the map and what you're coming with this also helps if you are talking to command chat and understanding like hey is there any tanks around oh hey there's a tank in uh, about sector i don't know f4 just as on, on any map just what well, i don't know random sector okay well we'll, we'll keep an eye out for them Sometimes just simply communicating can give you extra awareness that you may not have known about. Oh, well, I'm glad I asked. I uh, didn't know there was a tank coming. Do you know what kind? Uh, I don't know what kind, but there's a tank. Okay, that, that's still important information. Just because you don't know what tank's coming after you in a certain area because the officer tells you, it's still good to expect it and expect the worst in some cases. In terms of just extra things I want to throw on the end, I just want to go over some extra basics. Overall in a tank, you have four modules. You have the hull, which is your overall tank health bar. If there was a health bar. Once that reaches zero, you are dead. You are, your tank's destroyed, you're done, you gotta get a new one. Then you have the turret, which involves your turret speed and your machine gun. If you have, uh, with a coaxial machine gun. If this goes down to zero, your turret will still be able to turn, but at a way slower rate. And you will have no co uh, coaxial machine gun. Next is your engine. Now, the engine obviously controls your mobility. If this goes down to zero, you can you will no longer be able to move until that engine is fully repaired. But so it's good to keep that engine safe at all costs. And then fourth, in probably the most damaged module is your tracks. The tracks also control your mobility. If you lose these, you will only be able to go into one gear, which you can still move but at a way slower rate. So it's not the end of the world and tracks are not a critical part of the tank in the sense of it damages your hull if they keep hitting it. If they keep hitting your tracks, it will do no damage to the hull. So just a little thing to keep in mind. Another thing I wanna go over is the amount of fuel it takes for each tank. For the lights and recon tanks, it only costs 100 fuel. For the mediums, it costs 200. And for the heavies, Depending on what country you're ha you are playing as and what tank you're asking for, it could be anywhere from 500 to 600 fuel. So just a little quick update with that, because it'd be nice to always keep an eye on your fuel. Now, this doesn't mean if you have the fuel, run and be reckless with your tank. No, you want to keep those fuel up as much as you can. It's better to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. So keep that in mind if you do have situations where you do have fuel you can ask for other tanks but that brings into my next point try not to ask for anything higher than a medium tank and even that's stretching it if you are a one-man crew one-man crews are not effective frontline tank fighters you are better off as a light tank or a recon vehicle anything in a medium tank or higher unless you're the only tank crew and you're a one man don't take these tanks Either wait for people to join your crew before you take these, or if you check if you are the only tank crew. It also isn't a bad thought to, at least in the beginning of the game, if possible, join a random squad and build up a set of nodes. At least if you build up a set of nodes and let the commander know that, they'll be very appreciative and probably give you more better tanks than other squads that don't build them nodes. Because by building them nodes, you're understanding that these things take resources, and the commander needs those resources if you want to get tanks. You're helping yourself out by building the nodes because then the commander can actually give you tank 
tanks and at least if you let them know hey i'm i'm gonna i am your tank squad i am gonna swap to give you some uh build you some notes then after that i would like a tank i guarantee they'll tell you thank you or hey appreciate it guaranteed at least most of the time unless the commander is just not really talking or anything like that so at least consider building nodes unless they're already built i believe that covers a lot to know as a tank commander maybe one or two little things maybe miss but if you if i did please feel free to put them in the comments i appreciate it. every little bit of feedback is appreciated and i do take into consideration uh if you made it this far appreciate you watching the video i do have a discord link in the server i did just make a Discord server recently. If you want to join, feel free. Get together, get some games with uh, other people that you want to play with. Uh, stuff like that. But um, thank you for watching and uh, keep an eye out for the next guide. Take care. Okay, there's so many people spawning at the, the HQ, but there's this supply truck over there that hasn't been used. Shoot that guy. He's dead. Well, I'm gonna do a re-